This is our vision of hardware. Basically, hardware is eating the world today. And and if you look at the largest exits last year, like four among the eight l largest exits, they were in hardware industry. Like you get Nest, GoPro, Oculus and Bits, for example. Also, there are a few other, like in the top tens, even more in hardware. If you look at the hardware investment last year, like it, it has doubled like in the past four years. So it's really impressive and something's really going on in the hardware. Uh, we have this vision that the hardware revolution is right now ongoing. So basically, what we believe is that the hardware revolution started 2005, 2007 with uh, the iPhone. If you look at what's happening right now, we can we truly believe at the Hardware Club that there is kind of a planetary alignment. It means like in 2005, you got for the first time very access to components, and it was because of the iPhone, because the price of all the components was going cheaper, and and because the iPhone was whispered, and then you got the tablet. A uh, second thing that we add in 2005, 2007, it's actually the fact that 3D printers were out for the first time, and so it was becoming more easy for startups to start prototyping and to start building their own devices. Then we got like companies like we call them like the makers of the hardware revolution. Raspberry Pi, Arduino, I'm I'm sure guy you pretty know all of them. And actually the fact that mixing mixing like Arduino, Raspberry Pi was like 3D printers, it was for the first time in all the tech technological world history possible and feasible for founders to start building their devices. Previously, if you want to start like a hardware company, you need a fab, you need like to raise two million to start prototyping and it was really difficult. And starting 2005, 2007, it has become more easy to start building your own horn hardware devices. And we believe that this is like the starting point of the hardware revolution. And then from that, you get something else hap that happened. It was actually the crowdfunding revolution. Indiegogo was actually the first one, the first platform, and then you got Kickstarter, and it made feasible and possible for hardware funders so to build their devices, to prototype them, and then to launch them, to launch, uh, to launch it, sorry, on a platform and to test the market. So it was very, it has become more easy for funders to think about, whoops, devices, start building them, and then show them and 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 test the market. And that's what allowed and uh, allowed the crowdfunding uh, revolution. So this kind of alignments of the planets make the hardware revolution possible and and actually we believe like this is just the beginning um we right now entering what we call the early majority phases it's basically when your father uncle sisters that have nothing to do with technology they just figuring out that connected devices are out and that they are interested in so so we believe that this is just starting yeah but still this is very hard. No matter if it's easier to prototype, no matter if it's easier like to test your market, it's still very difficult and you all know that. And it's still very difficult because the checklist is longer. Uh, you have to source the components. You have to deal with the manufacturing. You have to deal with the supply chain. You have to manage the shipping. And then you have to deal with all the distribution network, which is like, which is a mess actually. And so that's why we decided a year ago to start the hardware club. Our vision was like, when you're a hardware founder, like you're very lonely, like you're on your own, building your startup, trying to reinvent the wheel. And we figured out like a year ago that the founders, hardware founders, they didn't know each other. Even if they were living in the same city, they didn't know each other. They never met. So we started in Paris, uh, so yeah, 12 months ago, with a small dinner with some startup we were working with, like Lima, iSketchNote, Erdul, uh, Headphones, Smoke.io and Print. And we figure out like, okay, let's connect them together. So, and we, it was very good and it went very well. And actually they had a lot of problems and, and we wanted to help them solve those problems. So we started in Paris, then we've done one in London, then one in Dublin, in Berlin, Shanghai, Shenzhen, uh, Tel Aviv, like pretty like all around the world, starting gathering the founders so we can build the strongest community of hardware founders all around the world. Right now we have around like 64 startups in 20 different countries. Uh, what we provide to this community is basically the, the pillars we have is like meet, learn and scale. So basically meet is like meetups like this. So everything's free. We want people to gather, to join, to share their experience and to share the knowledge. We want to gather like experts in this industry so you get the chance to talk with them. That's why we're having VCs today. 
learn. We're doing a lot of free presentation, online courses, and everything's online, so you can access to the knowledge, so you can learn how to build devices. We also are organ organizing sorry, um, workshops, for example, uh, with the team of Bolt. Our first one in Europe is going to be in Paris, and then it's going to be another one at Hardware Startup Lab. I think the guys are here from Hardware Startup Lab. Yeah, cool. Um, and then the third thing we're doing is what we call scale. Scale is about uh, when you went through prototyping, then testing your market on crowdfunding, then you have a proof of market, and then you need to scale. Basically, you need money, you need to secure the manufacturing, and you need to secure distribution. And that's where also we wanted to help. So we built a lot of partnerships with like big distributors like Amazon, Best Buy, uh, Staples, like a lot of them. We also build like, yeah, this is it. Partnership with guys like Foxconn, Picatron, uh, Jebel, and also like um, contract manufacturers like Dragon Innovation, who are helping a lot of startups. And also, we believe that those are the three main issues like hardware startups are facing when they're just entering the scaling phase. Basically, you need funding, you need funding, then you can secure the manufacturing, and then you need to secure distribution. All those three elements, they're very linked together. So that's why we're doing that. So we're building the strongest community, building the strongest partnership with all those guys so you can have like the fast track access to, uh, to those distributor manufacturers. And also on top of that, we're having an investment fund that will be ready by the end of the year, hopefully, um, to invest into the startups of the community. I hope, uh, yeah, so this is some of the future members. We have startups at different stages. Uh, some of them are here today. Uh, we don't advertise a lot of uh, the startup list. Uh, we rather like keep it some confidentiality for the startup. Many of them are still in stealth mode. All the startups are absolutely not in stealth mode. For example, like Misfit, which is quite big. Um, print, maybe you know them. Uh, here in England, we got Covered, Covered Design. Maybe you know uh, they're building like pretty cool uh, jewelry, connected jewelry. From Germany, we got Panono, Narrative from Sweden, uh, Flux from Taiwan. So it's really like diverse at different stages. And, and the point is really to build the strongest community of hardware founders all around the world. This is what we do. And our business model is like obviously like an investment fund. We invest in some of the startups uh, and all the rest is free. Like for us, it's really important, like for the hardware star startups and founders, to have access to all the resources they need to build hardware. <laughs>